Hello and welcome back to Hot to the Top. Hope you're all doing well out there today. Today it's a big game. We've got the Zurich Derby coming up for you because that's quite an interesting game. We then actually have to play Kriens off camera because for whatever reason the fixture schedule changed a little bit. But after that we've got the first leg of our first knockout round game in the Champions League and we've been drawn against Monaco which means we're going to see the return of Harvey Elliott today. Yep, after leaving us for £15.25 million, pounds, that was his minimum fee release clause at the time. He's had a very successful time on the southern French coast with Monaco, never dipping below a 7 rating. He's clearly doing something right there. So hopefully he won't score against us. Hopefully he has some off games against us. That's what we're praying for. Anyway, before we get into any of that, we have to talk about what's happened in between episodes. And I've got to say, it's been a bit more successful than perhaps we have been in recent times. You last here, of course, for the game against Schalke and Barcelona. Two massive wins there whilst we lost a few games off camera, which was really disappointing. Since then, we haven't lost a game, which is good. We finished off the first half of the season with a 3-1 victory over St. Gallen with Harry Kane and Dorable scoring the goals in that one. We had some pretty decent friendlies before jumping straight back into league action against Lugano with Lo Celso, Kane, Thad Davis and Sergio Nunes picking up some goals there. Luzerne, we had a 1-1 draw against them with Randy Schneider saving us in the 93rd minute before a goalless draw with Basel last time out. Now, as you can see by the date, it is the 11th of February. That means that the January transfer window has nearly been and gone. Our January transfer window is actually from the middle of January through to the middle of February. So we've got a little bit of time left. We have lost the player and you can, you might be able to guess which one it is. If we go to transfer history, uh, you can see down here that Silver Reese has gone to Tottenham for his minimum fee release clause of £23.5 million. Loads of bids came in for him at the start of the season. He kept rejecting contracts. He didn't want to sign a new contract with us, even up until the point of the January transfer window. He didn't want to sign a new contract and Tottenham came in and clearly offered him a lot of money because he's now gone for £180,000 a week, which is a big increase on the £40,000 pound per week he was getting with us the thing is it's not all doom and gloom because Thad Davis he's just developed magnificently all right look at the report here it says that Silver Reese is better than Thad Davis if we click on Thad Davis our coaches reckon he is four and a half star current ability now I don't quite get it if I'm honest with you he's developed rapidly he's 19 years old still and this is the thing that I find a little bizarre if we go to development and we go to is it training or is it pro progress? Yeah, look at progress. March 2028, he's rated at three star. And actually drops down a little bit to two and a half star in April 2028. But since then, is on an upward trajectory to the point where, according to February 2029, it says they're three and a half star current ability. That's a, that's a potential ability of four and a half stars. But if you look at the reports, our defending coach with 15 current ability and 15 potential ability, judging wise, says he's four and a half star current ability. So I feel like he is... A very good player. So we already have a ready-made replacement for Silver Reese, who's going to be here for the rest of the season. He's actually upset with us at the moment because plenty of bids came in from over over the January transfer window, and uh, we said no to pretty much every single one of them, obviously, because we don't want to lose him. Now, going back to his transfer history, you'll notice that no one has come into the club yet. Yet is the crucial word there because there are some bids on the table and I have tried to sign players. Obviously we sold Silver Reese very early on. We used that money to try and sign two players and we had contracts offered out to two players that were accepted. In the end though they decided that they wanted to go to different clubs for whatever reason which was really annoying because we had great offers for them. They would have helped us try and win a Champions League. We had a winger and a defender both rejected contracts so that was kind of frustrating but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, we are trying to get in. I think it is another winger and a defender coming into the club. So hopefully you'll see that at some point in today's episode. The issue we have, though, is we only have £31,000 left in our wage budget. So that will be the limiting factor on what players can and can't come into the squad as well. I've asked the board to increase wages and to increase transfer budget. And they've said no to both of them, which is really annoying. But let's not let that get in the way of proceedings today. Fingers crossed we're going to have some big, big wins against Zurich and against Monaco. So kicking things off today, the team against Zurich. Kalas is in goal as usual with a backline of Guadardo, Ross McQuaid, Haroldino Bunce and Thad Davis. Uh, Lo Celso and Albert start in the midfield today because we do have a bit of a midfield issue uh, with Pedro and Loa being injured and suspended themselves. So we have to make a little bit of a makeshift midfield with Schneider, Smith and Nunes in, in front of them and Harry Kane leading the line up on 13 goals for the season now. 
So then, kickoff is upon us here today. Looking forward to this one. Obviously, we've had plenty of classic derbies against Zurich over the years. Mostly us winning them, I've got to say. For the most part, we've been winning them. And hopefully, we do that again today. We put Zurich in their place and cement ourselves as the best team in all of Zurich. Come on then, Grasshoppers. Alex Smith on the ball. Back out towards uh, the, the midfielder with Guadardo now on the ball. Looking to play it back towards Ross McQuaid, who picks up that loose ball. Punts it forward, but not quite on the same wavelength as Guardo, as Guardado there, who moves back and doesn't quite collect the ball. But we do retain possession in the end with ourselves so getting it out wide to Guardado. Guardado back to Albert. Albert on the ball. Can he shoot? He does and gets his fourth goal of the season. The on loan man from Barcelona contributing there very positively, scoring his goal in the sixth minute of the game. Now you can see it's actually raining, to be fair, which is obviously quite good for an attacking player, not so good for defensive players. As Albert, with loads of time and space in the area, keeper should have done so much better there as well at the near post, but Felix Albert, what a goal. Now, plenty of you in the comment section have been telling me that I need to go away from the wing-back system and put full-backs on to try and help this formation work out defensively a little bit better. And whilst you're right... I, uh, I'm too stubborn to change it at the moment. We might change it when we are losing games or we need to win some games. Like the Monaco game, we might change it then just so we have a bit more defensive structure. But I feel like for the most part in the Swiss Super League, we can afford to play wing-backs and get those guys forward. You've also said maybe make the midfield positioning a little bit more defensive. And yes... You are probably correct with that. But again, the Swiss Super League, I'm just trying to go all out attack, basically. And for the most part, it's working out quite nicely. We're, we are still third in the table, but we are... In fact, if we, I can show you a table right now, can't I? We are still third in the table, but only by a point. And there's a long way still to go. We're just trying to make this formation work. Um, and obviously, I'm not doing a fantastic job because we've lost more games this season than we have done in like, the past three seasons or something like that. So it's obviously not quite perfect. And I do need to tweak things a little bit. But for the most part, it's working. And it works very effectively in the Champions League as well for some bizarre reason, even though it shouldn't. It just seems to have worked quite nicely. We beat Barcelona with it, for example. And that's saying something as Giovanni Lo Celso scores the second goal of the game after a nice worked routine down the right-hand side of the pitch, works its way into the box, and Lo Celso is there to put the ball in the back of the net. Nunes, who just loves running with the ball, gets the cross into the middle. Schneider plays it back down, takes the shot, actually, and it blocked into the path of Lo Celso, who fires that one into the bottom corner. And so as we approach half-time, we've had 11 shots to Zurich's one shot, which obviously is just fantastic stuff. Why do we need to go more defensive if we're only letting Zurich have one shot against us? That's part of my argument as to why I'm not changing things too much. At the same time, I also want a bit of a title fight towards the end of the season. We have walked the league the past couple of seasons, so I think actually losing a few games, even though it's ten, well, not it's not on purpose, obviously, but you've pointed out the issues to me in the comment section. I've taken those on board, and I've kind of decided to ignore them because I want a more competitive final season in the league, just because I think that might be slightly more interesting. Second half, though, is going by rapidly. Not many highlights at all. We're already 75 minutes into the game. Probably worthwhile making a change or two out there. Luca Anselmi just come back from an injury, so Harry Kane makes way for Luca Anselmi. Uh, we'll also bring Juric onto the pitch. No, he's actually quite tired. Dorival can come onto the pitch then for Guardado instead. Confirm those changes. That should work out quite nicely. Zurich still to have a shot in the second half. Only the one shot they've had all game, whereas we have had 20, which you've got to say to only get two goals from that kind of dominance is a little bit frustrating. Thad Davis to La Celso. Back out to Thad Davis. Can he put a ball into the middle? No, but La Celso definitely can. Nearly onto the head of Anselmi. Cleared only as far as Alex Smith. Felix Albert, the first goal scorer, gets it out wide to Dorival. Dorival into the middle is brought down. We've picked up a penalty. It's going to be a our first, so we'll probably just have to wait and see what happens there. I think Randy Schneider is still the designated penalty taker, I believe, if Harry Kane isn't on the pitch, because Harry Kane's penalty taking stats are fantastic. Assistant referee, or the VAR, sorry, has come back and he's told us that it is going to be a penalty. Come on, lads, let's get the third goal of the game. Who's taking this one then? I'm pretty sure it should be Randy Schneider. Is the referee going to send him off as well? He's taking his time. Surely a red card. Just a yellow card. It is Lo Celso taking the penalty and he buries that into the bottom corner. 3-0, game over. And for once, when I say game over, it actually is game over. We've won that one, 3-0, big win to Zurich. 
thank you for the three points. So as mentioned earlier on, I'm going to go and play the Crienz game off camera and probably do a bit of contract negotiation. I suppose whilst you're here, we can have a look at these contract negotiations. So the first player coming in for £22 million is a wonder kid. He's a central midfielder, a position that we perhaps could do with a little bit more quality and of course I am sort of thinking about the future at the very end of this save we're going to try and go 10 20 years in the future simulating so I do want to build a good side I want to get some good players in so it was also thinking that this guy could be one for the future immediately though I feel like Andreas Diaz a centre-back is perhaps a little bit more important for the squad though Basel we're paying 25 million pounds for this wonder kid centre-back okay and we are paying uh, Arsenal I think it's five million pounds up front so obviously that's about 30 million what is that hey let me just check this uh what is the transfer offer from us it's is it just 22 million I thought it was I thought we paid oh uh, okay maybe it's 22 million pounds for this guy and then this guy from Basel sorry this one, if transfer offer is £5 million up front. So we need £27 million to complete the transfer, okay. Which actually we don't have right now. So if we look at the budget, we've got £25 million to spend, which isn't enough. Uh, and we only have, was it £30,000 left in the wage budget. So what we're going to do temporarily, okay, just hear me out here. Uh, make budget adjustments. What I think we can do, right, is we can increase our wage budget by uh, just a little bit. And that should be enough to get both these contract deals through. So this guy wants maybe £77,000 per week. Okay, let's just negotiate this regular starter, blah, blah, blah. 60k per week. We, okay, let's take it down to 50. 50k per week, all right, lad. No new substitute fee, but other than that, and no yearly wage rise. Other than that, let's just suggest those terms. It was 69,000. What are you on about, lad? £56,000 per week. 59. Let's bring it down to 56 again. It accepts that. Okay, brilliant. Good stuff. Diaz, start negotiations for him. He wants to be a star player. Regular starter, mate. That's what you're going to be getting. Star player. Okay, well, I'm not going to be here. So you can be a star player. That's fine. Uh, contract. Okay, 11 grand. What does he actually want? 19. Let's just give him that. Give him that. Get him into the club. Okay, right. We've sorted out those contracts. What we do now, very sneakily, make budget adjustments. We, oh, no. You've, you hate to see this. I really messed this one up. I thought I could do it. So now I feel like we have to choose between one or the other. And I feel like we probably have to go for the defender more than the striker, the midfielder, sorry. I feel like we have to go for the defender. What I thought I could do is because if I didn't click continue, it wouldn't quite register all of the, the changes that I'd made. So I thought I could just change it one way to offer all the wages and change back the other way to quickly get the transfer budget without the board realising. But clearly, the board have outsmarted me there completely. They've diddled me. So in the meantime, what I am going to do then is go and play the Korean game off camera, try and sort out this transfer mess, and I will see you at the Monaco game. And so the game against Koreans actually went quite well. We won 3-2 on the day. The scoreline looks really close, but Koreans literally scored their two goals uh, with their two shots on target, where we had loads of shots and scored through them. So luckily, we won the game there. We go joint top of the table as it stands now with Bilesa, who are just ahead of us. And the young boys now drop one point behind us in a turbulent week. Now we have European Champions League football for you with two new faces that won't be playing, unfortunately. Now, we actually did manage to sign both of those players. They came through to accepting the deals, and it just said you can accept the one for Diaz, first of all, and then it said you can adjust the budget for the other guy. So I was like, fair enough, we'll just do that then. So big money being spent there on these two players. Andres Diaz comes in from Basel. He's a Uruguayan centre-back, three-star current ability, five stars potential at the age of 20. He's heading has to be a lot better. We'll work on his heading very, very soon. At six foot one, he should be better at heading and things like that. But his jumping reach is pretty high. His physicals overall are really good and his mentals are pretty decent too. So in the future, we'll be a great player. We won't see him much, obviously, but hopefully for when I simulate forward in the future, we'll see him be a future club captain or something like that. And then for £22 million outright, we have bought Boro Mukic from Arsenal. Another wonder kid. He is a centre midfielder from Bosnia. Three-star current ability, five-star potential at 20 years old as well. Well, his technicals are an awful lot better. His physicals are slightly better too. And the mentals, maybe not quite so good, but the mentals look really good to me. So again, I think another great player for the future for when we simulate into the future more than anything else. These two players will play in the league games because they've signed for the club 
after the deadline for registering players for the Champions League. So unfortunately, we couldn't register them to play in the Champions League. So you won't see them today against Monaco, unfortunately, but you will see them in the future in particular league games. If we head to the lineup then for this particular fixture against Monaco, the lineup is this. We've got Kalas in goal and have reverted to fullbacks. Dorival and Thad Davis playing as fullbacks into the rather than wingbacks, with Ross McQuaid and Sterigu as the centre-back partnership. Pedro and Albert stay in that midfield partnership with Smith, Nunes and Schneider in the attacking midfield, and Anselmi is going to be leading the line ahead of us today. Harry Kane demoted to the bench for now. So then, kickoff is upon us here today. It's a European night, the first knockout round, and we've been given Monaco. And if I'm honest with you, I feel like Monaco are a side that are very much beatable. I think they are the, the, one of the kindest draws we could have been given. And like we say every single time, as long as we don't concede in the first leg when we're at home, that's absolutely fine. We don't want Monaco to get any away goals whatsoever. But we do know that Fad Davis has picked to an injury. And we also know that we don't really have a backup right back other than Dorival, who's not really a right back. So that's a little bit of a shame. Guardado's going to come on for Thad Davis at left back instead. Then Dorival moves over to the right. That's a very early blow, I've got to say. As I was saying, though, Monaco, uh, I what was I going to say? I cannot remember now. It's escaped my mind. Harvey Elliott, obviously a former player of ours, trying to score a goal there. Only was with us for two seasons. He's been at Monaco an awful lot longer than two seasons. So he's probably more of a Monaco player than a Grasshoppers player in, in his mind. But in our hearts of hearts, we know that he is a Grasshoppers player. And he'll be secretly celebrating that goal from Luca Anselmi. The free kick comes in, headed across to him by Sterigu. And then Luca Anselmi is there to put that one into the back of the net. Fantastic free kick from Nunes. Headed back across goal. Actually, it was two goals. Sterigu had the shot. It's saved by the keeper, which is sort of pushed into the path of Anselmi. But Sterigu who gets the assist somehow either way. Brilliant stuff there as we go 1-0 up before half-time. And what I was going to say, I have remembered it now, Monaco is the kindest team, I think, that we could have been given. It's the kindest draw. We, like, we could have had a Man City or a Bayern Munich, for example, like, and that would have been really tough. So I think coming against Monaco is, luckily for us, the easiest draw we perhaps could have had, although Monaco looking to punish us right now because they've heard me say it's the easiest draw. They'll win like 5-1 now in the second half or something like that. As good interception there from Dorival who gets the ball up towards Anselmi who doesn't win it. And Monaco retain possession, looking to come straight back at us, although under pressure from our attacking players there. Still playing it out wide, not getting it forward that much as Harvey Elliott still on the ball, plays it back to his full back there as they look to play it across the back. The pressing from us and the pressure is so good, they can't get it forward and eventually goes all the way back to the goalkeeper and instead they now try and build up from a left-hand side of the pitch instead. Eventually making it into our half, nearly losing the ball there. It's a great ball forward towards Perez, who's... Um, well, I mean, I was saying the entire time how poor Monaco were playing around the back. What are they doing that for? Punished us, haven't they? That's what they've done. They've uh, they've had my trousers down and they've they've absolutely punished us there. It was Perez <sighs> scores a good goal. Annoyingly, we've had loads more shots than them as well. That's their away goal. That's their route into the quarterfinals should they need it as well. So we need to be careful of this going forward. If we can get the ball off and we can't concede anymore, we can't afford to concede any more away goals as Pedro misses the challenge there. And Harvey Elliott, the former Grasshopper player, has scored against us. I tell you what, you hate to see that, don't you? Rick on the ball. What does he do? Gets it into Chavas, who... Did he score the first goal? I can't remember now. He uh, gets past Pedro's mistime challenge. And we should have defended that an awful lot better, shouldn't we? I suppose it was written, wasn't it? It was written that Harvey Elliott was going to be scoring against us. Nunes with a free kick into the middle, collected by the goalkeeper. Now, what's going to happen from this highlight then? The goalkeeper looks to get rid of it. I assume he's going to play it short. He does play it short, but into a space which was quite good. Harvey Elliott with plenty of space as well to put a great ball forward towards Perez who scored a third goal, but I feel like that was offside. The assistant manager, assistant manager, assistant referee's not moved. Going to VAR, and it has been disallowed rightfully so, I've got to say, as Dorival gets it into Sterigu from this free kick. Launches it up the field to, not really launching it, passes it to Pedro, plays it back to Kalas at the back. Sterigu on the ball, can we get it out wide just to have a bit more space maybe? No, through the middle, Pedro out towards Anselmi, plays it back to Pedro. Great ball to Dorival, we've got three bodies in the middle, Schneider's there, can't quite reach it. Pedro collects the loose ball though, Nunes, Nunes back to Dorival. Dorival, just, can we just get a nice small ball forward to someone no we lose it we should have God, we should have scored from that at least had a shot and goal Perez racing forward Monaco 
make it three. Should not have said it was easy. So obviously, this is uh, not what we wanted at all. Uh, Harry Kane, please come on the pitch. And uh, Alex Smith, get off for Sam Shelton. And La Celso, come on for Randy Schneider. Uh, we can't make any more substitutes, of course, because we have to take had to take Thad Davis off, didn't we? So those two changes we'll have to do for now. Uh, we need to say, get creative out there. Pedro on the ball right now into Sterigu, who plays it out towards Dorival. Pedro into Nunes. Nunes into Randy Schneider. Randy Schneider, what's he going to do with this? He gets, actually gets past his men, to be fair, into the area and might have just won us a penalty. And the VAR has said, yes, you have won the penalty. Harry Kane to take it to give us a lifeline in today's game. Harry Kane into the bottom corner. Cool as you like. The substitute scores his 15th of the season. Run to get the ball as well. You love to see that when you're behind. You score a penalty or a goal. The player just doesn't celebrate. They get the ball back to the centre circle. Come on, lads. Focus. Let's score a goal. Let's say get creative again. I don't think that really worked, did it? We got creative by winning a penalty. Kalas then up towards Sterigu. Come on, let's get bomb down this wing and do something good with it. Far too many players standing right next to each other there. What is going on? That's probably my tactics, to be fair, with players too close to each other. Kane on the ball, back out towards Dorival. Come on, let's do something nice and clever here. Dorival in plenty of space to whip a ball in the middle. Shelton's there and Sam Shelton grabs his second goal of the game. We're back on level terms with Monaco and we are in control of the ties as well. We're not, oh, it's 3-3. They've got the away goals. They're the ones in control of the tie. But in terms of the momentum in the game right now, it's a great header from Sam Shelton. We are in control. I mean, we've had more shots. We're, we're on the upper hand now as we're scoring some goals. If we can just grab one more, let's say get creative again. Get creative again, boys, and back me up and score a fourth goal to at least have a one-goal lead in this uh, European Champions League tie. Unfortunately, we don't do it, but we end 3-3, and it could have been a lot worse. We were 3-1 down. We could have lost our heads completely, but we fought back to 3-all. All we have to do now is win in Monaco or draw 4-4. Four, four. We can draw 4-0 or, or win in Monaco. That are our options. They're, they're pretty difficult options, aren't they, to be fair? We've got our backs against the wall. Thad Davis only out for three to four weeks, which isn't too bad, I've got to say. Uh, it potentially could be back for the next Monaco game as Pedro's forced it out through suspension for picking up some yellow cards. The next Monaco game then is middle of March and we are, to be fair, he could be back potentially he could be back for the Monaco game, Thad Davis, but only just, so it might not be sensible to play him. But there we go. That is the aim for next episode. As well as Monaco, we're also going to play St. Garland next episode too, because I think that's quite a good fixture as well to do. So look forward to that one, where hopefully we'll see the return of Thad Davis. We'll progress to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, and we'll go top of the table as well, because we need to get back on top of that table. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have done, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.